What's going on guys, this is Rob, and we are wrapping up Craven's Last Hunt in time for Spider-Man 2 on the PS5. And as always, at the end of this video, you'll find a link to the playlist with the other two videos to get you caught up on everything that's going on. But in effect, video number one was Craven killing Spider-Man. Video number two was Craven replacing Spider-Man. Video number three is Spider-Man coming back from the dead. Now here's the crazy thing about this, right? A lot of what goes on in Craven's Last Hunt is as much metaphorical and metatextual as it is tangible, which is to say, Peter Parker is alive, and you're actually gonna find that a good chunk of time has passed since he was shot in the chest by Craven. But it's a really cool moment here because it kind of has this sort of inner monologue where he's basically dealing with the ramifications of when Craven killed him. Because something to understand is that Craven going after Spider Man happened like that. Literally, Spider Man's just in New York, and then suddenly Craven's like chasing him down all over the place and then shoots him in the chest point blank with a rifle. So it really kind of took him by surprise and it was an incredibly traumatic experience. And so because of that, he kind of jumps back and forth between his love for Mary Jane Watson and basically succumbing to his injuries and the just psychological effect of it, right? Basically life and death. And so because of this, while he does talk about Mary Jane, that's his anchor to life. That's the thing that brings him back. The other part of this is reminiscing and kind of thinking about everything Craven told him because one of the things to know during this story, Craven the Hunter had kind of stopped believing that Spider Man was just a guy out there who has powers. And instead, he started to see him as more of like a mythological being, right? A person out there that just represents power and so on and so forth, almost magical in nature. And so by taking out Spider-Man, it was kind of like Kraven solidifying himself as the greatest hunter to ever live, which is actually a pretty accurate description just because of the fact that with his spider sense, Spider-Man can take on most anybody out there outside of just incredibly powerful reality warpers, right? But like a really good example of this, in Avengers versus X-Men, he basically overpowered Colossus, who was also the juggernaut at the same time, right? That's the power of the spider sense, guys. But ultimately, he ends up digging himself out of the grave and coming back. Now, for those of you guys who were curious about the dark costume, this, of course, rose to prominence because of the design of his costume around the middle of Secret Wars. We ended up finding out it was a Venom symbiote later on down the line. But it pops in and out in Marvel Comics from time to time because fans just love to see it. But once he comes out, what he realizes is that by going through and just looking at, like, newspaper clippings and so on, actually making his way through the Kravenov estate, right? Like Craven the Hunter's home, he realized he's been dead for two weeks or at least been out of it for two weeks. Now, the reality here is that he survived because of his healing factor, right? Like Spider-Man has a healing factor. It doesn't get talked about a whole lot. It's nowhere near the level of like Deadpool, Wolverine, the Incredible Hulk, but it is capable. And depending on the severity of the injury, he can heal and then come back, which is exactly what happened here. But it took two weeks for him to recover and then basically emerge. Now, the thing about this and what's so cool is that you get to see Spider-Man as you normally never see him. This dude is incensed and rarely do you ever get to see that, right? It's one of the coolest things when you get to see a pissed off Spider-Man. Oh, it's amazing. Like, for example, in, uh, God, what was it? Renew Your Vows when he let Venom die? Just like stuff like that, right? You get to just see these amazing moments where Spider-Man is just eight kinds of pissed off. And in this instance, he goes after these two henchmen who were here, beats the living tar out of them, and is like, where's Kraven? Where is this guy? And ultimately, he ends up finding out that Kraven is in New York. And Kraven himself is just kind of like, Spider-Man's coming. He's going to return. And he's actually sort of looking forward to the moment when Spider-Man comes back. Now, before he does, he, of course, stops off to see Mary Jane Watson. One, because she's the love of his life. And two, because the guy's basically gone two weeks without getting laid. I mean, what would you do in that circumstance, right? So, of course, he ends up getting with Mary Jane Watson, the two touch naughty bits, and then he goes forward from there. But in all seriousness, right, I mean, all joking aside, the thing about this is that him getting with Mary Jane isn't necessarily just to, you know, satisfy some primal urges. It's really more of him trying to find some measure of normalcy, right? To feel like the world didn't end. And Mary Jane Watson kind of being his foundation, right? The person that grounds him, that reminds him that no matter what happens, as long as she's there, everything's fine. He can't get over Craven. It's just a ghost that lingers in the back of his head. 
Kraven got the better of Spider-Man, Kraven killed Spider-Man, then Kraven replaced Spider-Man. He stole his life. And so because of this, he goes after Kraven. Now, of course, when he catches up to him, the fight between the two is really, really interesting because Spider-Man just pummels this guy and Kraven does nothing. Right, he actually gives us this amazing monologue, right? He says, and yet within him is something more, something great, something awful. The essence of the demon that brought Russia to ruin. The demon that destroyed my father, consumed my mother. The demon I have at long last defeated. Now, this is kind of like the metaphorical part, right? Spider-Man didn't destroy Russia, <laughs> right? It was really just more of like the collapse of the Soviet Union and the demon representing in a lot of ways, the concept of change, right? The death of something and the rebirth of something else. But Craven is kind of reminiscent of like the old days, right? The old country, the Soviet Union, Russia at the height of its power, depending on who you're talking to. But he says, yes, yes, I hear you. I understand it's almost time, but not yet, not yet. Not till my victory is complete. And it will only be complete when he understands but he doesn't understand. And that's why he tells him, right? Where he just puts his hands up and just lets Spider-Man absolutely beat the crap out of him. He's like, I'm not going to resist. I have no reason to fight. And he says, don't you see? I finally won. I killed you, Spider-Man. I buried you. And after I killed you, I took your place. It's the ultimate accomplishment. It's the ultimate achievement. What better way to defeat your opponent than to not only quote unquote kill them, but then take everything of value from them, right? And that's the thing. He says, you have to go forward for the rest of your life knowing I got the better of you. I overpowered you. I took you out. I am your superior in every sense of the way. You can lie to yourself. You can tell yourself whatever it is that you want to say, but I am better than you. You know it and I know it. And so he says, follow me. And that's the crazy thing is Spider-Man does just because of the fact that his spider sense will tell him if there's any kind of danger, there's no spider sense going off. So there's no reason to believe there's an actual trap. And what he does is he takes him down to meet a character by the name of Vermin, which Spider-Man's already aware of. Now, this is an aspect of the story that we hadn't necessarily covered. And truth to tell, it was because it just made more sense to wait until this moment to do it. But Vermin had basically been attacking people during the time when Spider-Man was Spider-Man, but also when Kraven was Spider-Man, actually attacking and consuming people. And in fact, he ended up earning the name the Cannibal Killer. But what had gone on here is that Craven had basically defeated and subdued Vermin. Now, one part of this is because of the fact that it's Craven, right? He's always on for the greatest hunt, right? Tracking down the greatest possible prey that he can. But the other part of this is he saw Vermin as a part of a plan that with him disguised as Spider-Man, he was basically torturing Vermin, right? Like burning him, different things like that. And basically convincing Vermin that like Spider-Man was a bad guy. Spider-Man was the one that was harming him. And so that's why when he walks towards him with the torch, it's really more the torch he focuses on than Kraven himself because it terrifies him, right? It's actually pretty sad. And it's a pretty terrible thing. But every time he tries to reach for the cage to get out, the electrified cage electrocutes them, right? And so it's just one of these things where he's just constantly tormented. And in seeing this, Spider-Man attacks Kraven exactly the way that you would expect him to, right? He goes after that guy. And again, where Kraven just kind of makes fun of him, he just sort of pokes at him a little bit, right? Saying things like, before I found the honor and dignity I'd lost when my country, my parents, fell to the spider and the primitive wilds of Africa? Hear me, Spider-Man, hear me. Hear the bellow of the elephant, the roar of the lion, the triumph of Kraven. He's relishing in all of it, right? He's relishing in the fact that he was able to push Spider-Man to the edge. He's relishing in the fact that Spider-Man is so pissed off. He's relishing in everything that's, that's happened, right? Killing him, taking his place, the whole nine yards. And in fact, he even kind of shows a moment of affection, right? Like, he's like, it saddens me to see you this way, Spider-Man, right? It saddens me to see you so angry, right? And he says, in some strange, inexplicable way, it saddens me to see you so upset, right? To like touch him, to see Spider-Man recoil. It's one of those things where, depending on who you talk to, some people will say that the relationship between Craven and Spider-Man is not that dissimilar from the relationship between like the Joker and Batman in the sense that there are people who argue the Joker's in love with Batman and that's why he chases him, right? He goes after him playing the whole cat and mouse game, right? People look at Kraven and Spider-Man and very much see the same thing based on this story. It's one of the big benefits of Kraven's last hunt 
is that is a story that's very much up to interpretation in terms of what his actual motivations are, what he means when he says things and so on and so forth. It's why the story stood the test of time. And so what he does is he basically unlocks the cage where Vermin is and then Vermin goes after Spider-Man. And it's really kind of by way of Kraven goading him and saying like, Spider-Man's the one that's harmed you, right? Spider-Man's the one that's tormented you, right? Don't let him get away with it. Don't let him think that he's better, stronger than you are, right? Hurt him back, Vermin. You owe it to yourself to all of us, right? And Vermin immediately attacks Spider-Man. Now, one of the cool things here is that Vermin starts to get the upper hand, right? Now, some of it's because Spider-Man's kind of holding back to a degree. He doesn't really want to harm the guy. But at the same time, even when he's trying to reason with Vermin and saying like, I'm not the guy who harmed you, that was Craven. Vermin doesn't care. And in fact, Vermin doesn't even believe him. And so Vermin starts to get the upper hand, slashing him, scratching him, and potentially could have even killed Spider-Man. And the thing about this is that Craven watches it all go down. He watches it all happen. And then he says, how old I suddenly feel, how unutterably tired. The game was a good one, man to spider, spider to man, but it was so very long. They said my mother, was insane, right? He's just kind of watching this whole thing happen. And as Vermin starts to get the upper hand and is actually about to kill Spider-Man, Craven's like, no, right? Breaks out his whip, throws a dagger in, in Vermin's hand, sticks it to a wall, and is like, your point's been made. Your work here's done, right? And just sends him out. He says, go, be free. And the thing about this is he tells Spider-Man, you gotta get out of here, right? Like, let me help you up. You're free to leave. I know you're not gonna let somebody like Vermin just run amok out there in the city of New York. You're gonna go find him. But the reality here is that he's done. He has no reason to hunt anymore. And in fact, that's what he tells Spider-Man, right? When Spider-Man doesn't necessarily believe him, right? He's just like, why would you just let me leave? And his response is, after all these years, you surely know that I'm a man of my word and I give you my word from this night forward, Craven the Hunter will never hunt again. And what he says is Spider-Man says, I'll be back, right? And Craven says, I don't doubt it. This is a really important part. He says, I don't doubt it. Every man, every woman, every nation, every age has its spider. You have to be mine. What a burden, what an honor. And he says, goodbye. So as Spider-Man takes off, Craven officially ends his hunt, right? He says, how calm I feel how peaceful, as if something inside me, some knot, some tangle of fear and anger, and so much more has finally been untied. All these years, fleeing Russia, suffocating in America, finding release, finding honor in the jungle, all these years, and I've never known peace or calm or that elusive thing called happiness, but I feel as if I can know it now, that it's nearby, just outside perhaps, hidden in the patter of the rain, the drumbeat of the thunder, peace, calm, happiness, and ending now. He picks up a rifle and that's the end of Craven, right? He literally just ends himself just like that. And like, that's how the story ends. That's how Craven dies, right? Like Craven died, this, this story, Craven's last hunt, it's the death of Craven the hunter, right? It's one of the coolest things. Of course, Spider-Man catches up to Vermin and Vermin gets thrown in jail and yada, yada, yada. But this is the reason why Craven's last hunt is so significant. It's the official death of his character in Marvel continuity. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. Make sure you guys check this playlist if you wanna get caught up with the rest of the story. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments and I will catch you all later. Peace.